Hello beautiful people, today I will be talking about shadow work and in this first part of the two-part video I will be talking all about introduction and why you might be in that place of seeking to unravel the beautiful gifts that you will find that have been hiding in the shadow, why they have been hiding in the shadow and most of all, I want to bring this important thing to the start. How the shadow work is really the beginning of your quest to your truth. Beginning of your quest to fulfillment and actualizing your real potential as a person. And I can't really move any further without talking about personality, about talking about masks and identities that we form. And we form them in childhood. We form them based on what we discovered as children, what works. So as children, we are the most concerned about survival. And because most of our caregivers, like humans, are not well developed emotionally. So we have to mold ourselves as children to fulfill their expectations of how a child should be like, how they're feeling better when we mold our behavior and adjust our personality so that we feel accepted. And we do all these things with the very important belief that these things will help us survive through belonging, through being accepted, through being taken care of, because this is our main concern as children, to preserve our life and to grow up and to form ourselves as fully capable adults. Now, when you were a child, you had to test and experiment and try on these different behaviors and you were trying them on to see what worked, what gave you the best results. So people develop different behaviors such as people pleasing, as phoning, because they see, okay, if I'm a good girl or a good boy and I always please my parents, I always make myself so cute and all that, they will accept me better. They will give me what I want based on these behaviors. So it's a form of manipulation, but it's a coping mechanism. Another way could be if you were brought up in a rough household, maybe you had to develop a more of a forceful coping skills. So you became maybe a more forceful personality where you have a tendency to manipulate people through abuse or coercion. And, you know, some, some people do that to get what they need. Other people had to develop a certain level of maybe overworking or performing because their, their parents had a need to see their child as ambitious and overachieving so that they feel better about themselves. And these behaviors seem to have worked best. So I just gave you a few of mechanisms how we develop different behaviors and personalities that we carry on through to our adulthood from childhood. And people, because we exercise them and practice them on a daily basis, and they change very little, they just adjust to different environments and circumstances that we live in, but they often still show the core of the behavior from the childhood. I speak all about the beliefs that make us form these masks and behaviors in my other video. But it's the belief of surviving that's the most crucial for a child. And the funny thing is that as we move past childhood, when we no longer are concerned with someone putting a roof over our heads, 
we are still practicing and reliving our life through the same coping mechanisms that with the behaviors and habits and the ways we go through our life, they form a sort of personality, a sort of a mask. And I want to start by saying people are very tied to their personality. They, there is a lot of talk about personality types from the, the point of view of different methods, different theories, and people tend to blame their personality for many shortcomings, or they would excuse themselves because of the personality type they have. And I think personality type is that, is the end. But the truth is, it's just a result of living and relieving through coping behaviors, through different actions, through the adjustments like I was speaking. It's just a result that you're seeing. It's not all you are. And this is what brings me to be talking about the shadow. So people start reaching for shadow work for all sorts of reasons. And out of all the reasons, I believe the most important and the most common one is a state of disillusionment. So I gave you all the ways we were brought up to be and then we lived our life until the point where you are through adjusting yourself in different ways and maybe when you gain more understanding you adjusted some of the coping mechanisms but it's still them that brought you to the shadow work your personality the mask you were wearing the limitations of these masks and identities is what brought you to seek shadow work the truth is disillusionment about what no longer works which is the masks that you believed they worked, is the essence of the threshold you're moving through. It's the meaning that it should give you to where you're going. Because as a child, you formed all these behaviors and maybe as a young adult, you formed some of these behaviors. Maybe you had a career, maybe you became a people pleaser, maybe you became a bully, maybe you became a perfectionist, maybe you became a workaholic, maybe you became, uh, you know, a volunteer, maybe you became a compulsive shopper, whatever, you know. And all these things that brought you here based on the idea that you needed to survive, they gave you a sense of reassurance that this worked to get approval, to get acceptance, to get peace. Now that you see, they might no longer work. The state of disillusionment that brings people to shadow work usually happens after something that you thought would work doesn't work anymore. So it could have been a failed relationship. Maybe you noticed that that person that you believed was this kind of person, maybe they betrayed you. All the things you did for them based on what you thought works. Maybe you were always pleasing them. Maybe you were always self-sacrificing. Maybe you were doing all sorts of things for that person. Maybe you put them on the pedestal and it was still not enough for them. And they left you. And that could be one of the scenarios. Or maybe you left them because you saw that you were never finding that level of appreciation or acceptance or approval that you were seeking through exercising these behaviors, exercising your personality. Another scenario that could bring people to shadow work could be losing a job. And it could have been a career that you 
invested in so much and you put in so much years of education, preparation, work, effort, exhaustion, just to get to the place where you are. And one of the scenarios, again, could be that either you achieved a high level in that career that you were really wanting and inspiring to get to, and now you see the lack of fulfillment. And you see, I've done all this hard work and it doesn't feel like I should feel. You don't get that reward as in, you know, when you were as a child and you were doing all the things to get what you wanted, to get approval, to get that sense of belonging, to get love. And you've achieved this level in your career and you still feel emptiness. Okay, or on the other kind of side or a flip side of this scenario could be that they fired you from this job. And as I was saying before, all of the exercise trained and refined ways of presenting yourself and projecting yourself outwards that have worked to an extent to a certain point in your life so that you could secure yourself through the predictability, predictability of how others would respond to your behavior. It only goes as far as it serves you. And when you hit a crisis, when you hit a place where you would want to inspect shadow work, when you decide you want to become more of a whole aware of your wholeness person. This is when your spirit, your higher self asks of you and it puts those crises and those challenges in your life so that you get a chance to move to that next chapter. Because only focusing on survival belongs to the chapter of a child and trying to secure your place through those coping but limiting to you mechanisms of behavior and personality style only belong to that limited chapter of your life. But expansion is going. You always are in the momentum of evolution and by clinging to those old identities, we are kind of increasing the tension from where we are to where we should be as the evolution really is constantly asking for us to become like following it. And because you've been clinging to the path so much, Sometimes the crisis has to be very dynamic and very dramatic so that, you know, as an elastic band that just snaps or just pulls you back, something really has to happen to bring your attention to the mistakes that you've been making. And the mistake is only on the, let's call it spiritual level, but not even so because it was all part of expansion. It's just how much we delayed aligning to our core self, the higher self potential that is in question. But the mistakes I mean is the mistakes that maybe we've been doing for decades into adulthood where we could have challenged them way earlier. But again, I don't judge any mistakes because everyone has their own path to evolution and everyone has their detours in learning the necessary life lessons where we have to <laughs> visit some people, we have to visit some experiences that teach us about ourselves. So when we actually snap through the crisis, we are ready to face the discrepancy, the gap of misalignment and so that we can realize and tap into the potentialities that have been hiding in the shadow until this point.
Now, all these things that I'm talking to, uh, presenting to you today are based on my own, like connecting the dots on my own inner, inner work, in my own work on consciousness, a lot of downloads and insights. So please be careful and slow in taking all this in because I'm drawing in a little bit of a journey here from, like I said, the past falsehood of being a child when you're all concerned about surviving to becoming the true authentic potential and fulfilled potential of your actualized self, your divine being, which is the truth. And you have to hit a certain place of the splitting when you're ready to inspect and challenge the old behaviors and take only what's needed and take it only with enough level of conscious decision making and awareness to the next part of your life. And this is the real power of the shadow work but I don't think anyone is talking about. You get to be discerning if you do it in the right way. By keeping certain parts in the shadow and being afraid to see them, you are blocking yourself from expansion that is asking of you. It can't wait for you to let it out. That's why you receive different disappointments. That, that's why you receive different crises. That's why you have disillusionment in your life. To see what has not worked. That the coping mechanisms based on survival are part of the past the falsehood of past. They're locked with our inner child, so to speak. And your purpose is to align with your higher self nature. I call it the core self because it's always inside of us and we always have access to it. And because our main goal on this planet in our lifetime is to fulfill our potential and align with our divine creative nature, the key word here is trust. As the survival is based on mistrust and having to work hard and hide different parts of our, our authentic self, to be accepted and the fulfillment of your divine nature is to align with the cosmos and realize your power in such a way, then the truthful thing is that you need to live a life in a flow, in an authentic way. And for this, we need to embrace all different potentials inside of us. People can call them archetypes, call them emotions, call them, call them diversity, whatever you want to call them. So if you had a pattern of being a workaholic, then you might have to realize a potential of relaxing that part of you that really you've been trying to push down hard that you called lazy. Maybe if you had a pattern of being overtly dependent on others, your path now is to realize the infinite potential and ability to achieve things. You can do it and you have that potential inside of you. Maybe, like I gave you an example, if you had a pattern of being a people pleaser, now you have to realize and access to that energy of assertiveness and knowing that you have anger to stand up for yourself. It doesn't mean that you have to go around beating around people or yelling at them. All you need to do is to realize that you have that potential 
and that you can tap into that energy to release yourself from the holding of the fear. And if you had a pattern of overgiving or sacrificing or caring or fixing people, then your journey is probably take priority of yourself and realize that it's not being selfish. It's part of your divine nature to prioritize how you feel and enjoy yourself in your life and that you following your bliss and your joy is enough. You don't have to please or fix anyone and care for anyone because your job on this planet is to align with your joy, bliss and creative self. And because people are so attached to their personalities, like I started saying in the beginning, they blame it on the personalities. They always excuse themselves with personalities that that's all there is. But it's really when you understand that the shadow work, it's a journey to the truth. It's the journey to realizing your authentic self. It's the journey to realizing your divine nature that lives always inside of you and through aligning closer and closer to it, you will find this deep fulfillment from that inner connection to those different parts of you and knowing that they're there that you have different parts of you, different potentials that have been dormant for the sole purpose of surviving that you no longer have to be preoccupied with because you can thrive. And the more you trust in your divine nature, the more you will become more of yourself, the more, you hap the more happy you become. And I speak all about this in my videos how negative emotions are actually the guidance system that brings us closer, that tells us when we have negative beliefs about ourselves, that we have been taking the wrong choices based on those masks, based on those coping mechanisms that took us away from that inner alignment, from that inner realization, and they also serve the purpose. But now your job is to head towards light, head towards the fulfillment of your potential, like I've been saying. And this holds infinite rewards that are waiting for you. So don't wait any longer. And to enjoy that fulfillment, to have that inner sense, that depth of integrating these different pieces of you and enjoy the fulfilled life where you can see all your potential. You need to be investing in that inner work. I have been investing for uh, into shadow work for many, many, many years. And over time, I've developed my own processes that have been so rewarding. I can't put this into words, but I will try. And I will record a video where I speak about the most powerful aspects and processes that I've developed and I tapped into in the end of this video. So you can watch this in your own time. But today, thank you for watching this introduction and I will see you in the next one.